recording. Oh, okay. You can cut the beginning parts. I will not do a boomerang on the internet right now, though. Okay. I just love this bottle. I think it's really a cool design. But I have a feeling that that's exactly what they were going for. They got... It's a really... Okay, I have so... a feeling that their market research is working. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of whatever we're calling this. We wine Down it. Wednesdays. Wine Down Wednesdays. And we got a couple really cameras fun... Cameras and wine. Cameras I don't know. We don't know what we're going to call this. Yeah, we got a really fun camera and a really fun wine. Um, so we found this in Trader Joe's, and we'll show you the little clip of us. Like two it. days ago. This is mid-September, and they had just stocked it, like, that morning. And, yeah. It's a very... I like the design of it. I'm kind of excited. And normally... Before, like, I try wine, I do a little research on the vineyard and the area and things like that just to get a basis. But for this one, I loved the bottle so much. And I felt like they were going for something different that I didn't want to, like, spoil it by looking stuff up. So we're kind of flying blind here. All I've got is what it says on the bottle. And we have a Nikorex that we found at a yard sale, an estate sale. And it's a cool little camera. I'm going to open it up here. It's um, from the 1960s. And it's going to be fun to kind of show you guys some It's a stuff. really cool. It's got a cool aesthetic. Yeah. All Just right. even looking at it. You want to go first this time? Pour some wine, sure. And talk about the camera? Yeah, I'll talk about the camera. You pour the wine. So this is a... Um, Let me pop this cork here. Yeah, twist top. So at, and on it, we have the 5014 Nikkor lens made in Japan. It's all made in Japan. This... The Nikon F came out in 1959, and I'm not going to do the whole, like, maybe like this being loud over here. time like I did last time. So the Nikon F, 59. This Nikkor X came out in, like, 62, only a few years later, as a low-end Nikon F mount camera to sell their lenses. That's pretty much it. And this one has this fancy little light meter on top. Um, the cool thing about this camera, though, is it has a bunch of firsts. It was the first to have a vertical plane focal, and it was the first to, what else? Oh, have a hinged back. The Nikon F, if you've ever seen one of those, like the whole back slips out, kind of like goofy, similar to a Leica. This one has, yeah, the vertical plane shutter right there in metal, and this hinged back. And it has a light meter on it, which the, the Nik light meter is cool. It's it's a cool little light meter, yeah. The Nikon F, the original Nikon F's light meter was housed in the prism, so it's through the lens metering. This has like a glass lens external, over, yeah, yeah, style. <laughs> and you can see it's pretty fun. It's a fun little camera. On the back, it has a film reminder. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. You can set the film speed and how many exposures. Your ASA. Set yeah. the ASA and how many exposures. Um, we don't really know a lot about this camera. No, this is like a newer addition to our collection, but we do have the Niker Matte, which is very, very similar, and I really like that camera. It's very unpredictable. You kind of get what you get, um, as far as, like, cameras go, I mean, metering and things, but when it hits it, it has an extraordinary feel. It feels vintage, but it still has sharpness. And it just gives us a result we have not gotten with anything else. So I'm assuming that yeah. this camera is the same. We haven't tried this lens. No. But, yeah, I'm assuming this camera does the same. We've used the Nikon F, and it had a ton of It's made of in Japan. So. Feel. Yeah, so. The lens is made in Japan. Yeah, the lens is made in the Japan. So is the body. So is the body. Yeah. Oh, wow. And this is a serial number that's pretty low. 35, 5,000. And I think they started in, like, the 30s and went only to, like, the 40s, thousands. Like, so this is pretty low. It's a fun little camera. I will say that we did some research, and they're rare to find in this good a condition, actually. Like, operable condition. And I've gone through the shutter speeds. I think speeds that's because they're, like, an amateur's lowering camera. Maybe. And people just shot them really hard. They weren't, like, a collector's item. Yeah. They were just made to be used, and they were. I've never ran across a Nikor, Nikor Rex. We've come across no. a few. I've had like three or four different Nik, uh, Niker mats and a few There's different Nikons. Yeah, 
But this Niker uh, Rex was before the Niker Matt, if that's what I'm understanding correctly about it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a quirky little camera. I will camera. say these old, this era camera, they do have a personality to them. And the lens and the body and the film stock, they give you a really cool result. They're fun to shoot. They're not terribly bulky. I mean, they're sizable. They're not itty bitty, but they give you a really good result and a lot of control with those wide open lenses. I guess if you come across a Niker X or a Niker Matt, pick it up, try it, yeah, shoot through it because you might it. like it way more than you think. And especially for, you know, under a hundred dollar investment, which is crazy that you can get such a cool result. To the wine. All right. So this wine is I'm pretty sure just totally trying to scam millennials. Like we'll make it look like liquor and it's awesome. Yeah. And you will buy it. And it works. It works. We bought it. It's like gangbusters. So this was nine bucks at Trader Joe's. And it is a pretty much equal blend of Cabernet and Shiraz. The Cab Sav is fifty one percent. And it's from the Barossa Valley in Australia. So we'll kinda we'll see. It's very, very grapey on the nose and has like a really beautiful thick yeah, color and it looks dark. A little more syrupy than last week. I was a little disappointed with last week's. So I'm yeah. excited about this one. Plus Trader Joe's is like the haven of like under twelve dollar bottles of wine. <laughs> it's fruity up front. It's very grapey. Yeah. Very fruity. Yeah, grapes up front. It's not very yeah. bold. I like it though. I really do. It's it's definitely so actually how they describe it on here. Kings of Prohibition Cab Shiraz Red Blend is elegant yet intense with vibrant flavors of plum and dark sweet fruits. So the parts I would agree with are elegant and vibrant. I wouldn't really classify this as an intense wine. Like, it's pretty... Yeah, it's drinkable. It's really drinkable. It's pretty fruity. It's not... It doesn't have any, like, peppery in there. Yeah, it's not, like, sit down And it has some of those, first. like, the flavors of wines that come from dry areas. The drier climate wines yeah. have a specific palate. Mm -hmm. Which and we like since we kind of... I like being out here and the, the desert. drier west. You like the desert? Yeah. Living in the desert? Mm -hmm. Drinking wines that were grown in the desert? Yeah. I guess but it no, means. it's very, it's plummy. It is plummy. It's very <laughs> fruity, but it's not very strong. I don't know. Why are you laughing at me? You're a little fruity. Oh, mean. <laughs> I'm, I like it. I don't think it's super yeah. intense. I don't think no, the cab really is very beautiful. forward at all. And it must be that Shiraz in there just mostly taken over, even though technically it's 2% less than the yeah. cab. Yeah. Really it like it. The Shiraz comes out a lot the cab it's not peppery like a cab so this one i think would be awesome Let's if you're like it. throwing a party get like the cheese plate out some crusty bread some cheese some olives our teeny monster the neighbors are back with their dog can you hear it um and this would honestly be a it's entertaining in the bottle alone so it would be a yeah, fun this would talking be... point and i think it would pair really well with those Pre-dinner Olives, mm -hmm. cheeses, crusty Definitely bread. would wake your palate up, too, to any food you put with it. And obviously, we're not meat eaters, so I think this would go really well with cheeses and a t cheese dish, for sure. Or that kind of... fruit and cheese. Yeah. And then fruit, cheese, and wine. This one's like, it holds its own well. You could drink it with dark chocolate, you know, after dinner and... That's true. Make you it a dessert wine. Dark chocolate mousse. I don't know if you'd want to pair it with too many fruity dishes because it has no, so much No, and I don't think I would pee. pair it with anything really peppery or strong or spicy because it would overpower the wine. Yeah. You know what would be fun to pair this with? Brenner. Breakfast for dinner. Oh. Some eggs and toast and avocado and this baby. Are you craving breakfast? No. <laughs> But I was just He's always fruits. craving breakfast. I found a gift card that we've been given for a restaurant, and he was like, "Oh, so oh, you're yeah, buying we're me breakfast?" Do that. Yeah, this one's fun. This would be a great one to even take to parties or something. Again, because oh, yeah. it just looks cool. It's easy to drink. They could drink it in a bunch of circumstances. Super drinkable. So it'd be great to share. It's like a bold 
Beaujolais sort of wine. Yeah. Fruity, flavorful. I really What about like a it. chili? It might go good with a chili. Not, a not spicy, the way I make it. <laughs> not a spicy or peppery chili, but just like a good It does feel chili. like a seasonal appropriate yeah, wine, too. Yeah, it does. It's, <gasps> you it's know what it, it would probably pair well with? What? Something pumpkin-y with chocolate. Like pumpkin, pumpkin. bread <laughs> with chocolate drizzle on top. Oh. So Doesn't good. that sound nice? Sounds so I don't good. know why I put lipstick on to drink wine. It's classy. <laughs> Cheers, baby. Cheers. See you guys next week. Go buy this one. This one's worth buying. Recommend it for sure. Yeah. I really like it. It was way better than the one last week. And the one last week cost like twice as much. <laughs>